So you have another N plus higher doping region which reduces the collector resistance and makes contact with the external terminal. So you have uh, N plus, N minus, P, N, N plus. Okay, so emitter between emitter and base, you have a forward biased PN junction. Between collector and base, you have a reverse biased PN junction. So that logic which is existing in conventional BJT is going to remain the same. So you know in a conventional BJT, the emitter base junction is forward biased and the collector base junction is reverse biased for the transistors to work in the active region, right? The same thing is uh, uh, continued here also. So the N plus region will have a very high doping concentration which reduces the collector resistance and makes contact with the external terminal. So the region is going to have thickness around 250 micrometers, 250 microns, okay? So the doping in the emitter layer is going to be very, very large. You know, emitter is going to be the terminal where it is going to supply a large amount of my majority carriers. Here we have considered NPN transistor, so it is going to supply electrons, right? So the doping is very, very large in the emitter layer. Whereas in the base layer, the doping is less and the thickness of base layer is also less because the, the, the recombination which is going to happen in the base layer is very, very minimum. So that is the reason why the doping in the base layer is also less. The thickness of the base layer is also less. A sufficient base width is required to prevent punch-through breakdown. So we have seen the effect of reach-through and punch-through effects, right? So you cannot keep the base width very, very minimum. So definitely you need to have a finite amount of base width to ensure that the reach-through or punch-through breakdown does not happen. So that is the reason why they have given the thickness of base layer to be 5 to 20 micrometers. So this uh, thickness of base region will reduce the breakdown voltage. The amplifier capabilities and breakdown voltages are to be compromised in power transistors. As I said, in power transistors, you have to be very, very careful about the breakdown voltage and the temperature. So in conventional transistors, they might be parameters of insignificance, but in power, power MOSFET, these two parameters become vital. So a large collector base voltage implies a large space charge width which is induced between the collector and base regions. So we have seen that collector base term, uh, junction is going to be reverse bias, right? So when you are going to give a very large amount of reverse bias voltage, the depletion region width is also going to become large. So the depletion region width is proportional to the amount of applied voltage. So you know in reverse bias, as you increase the reverse bias voltage, the depletion region width is also going to increase proportionately, right? So that is what is given here. So if you are going to give a large uh, collector, base collector reverse bias voltage, the depletion region formed between the base and collector regions will also grow enormously. Okay, so this is about the construction of power BJT. So remember this vertical layered construction of power BJT is most preferred because they found that this uh, uh, fabrication of this vertically oriented structure of NPN power transistor is going to handle a huge amount of power and it is also going to withstand the breakdown and it is also going to overcome the temperature characteristics as uh, which is the limitation in your conventional BJTs. Okay, now we will see what is the VA characteristics of power BJT. The power BJTs are gen large area devices. So you know that whenever you are uh, whenever you are going to operate at a very high power, the power dissipation area has to be large. Only then you can dissipate the power quickly to the load. The area is going to be very small. The temperature will also be large. The temperature of the region of the transistor will be increasing, which is not a good thing for your transistor. Okay, so generally power transistors are having very, very large area compared to a conventional BJTs. And the properties of power transistor will vary from different levels of doping and geometry. So what we have seen here, the vertically oriented structure of BJT will have its own characteristics for power and temperature. So if we are going to slightly change the geometry, slightly change the doping concentration, then the characteristics are going to change. So we are going to see, compare what is the uh, values of a small signal BJT and two power BJTs. And you can now, when you compare the, those values of a conventional BJT and power BJT, you will clearly understand why power BJT fabrication is going to be difficult. See this table. So this is a conventional small signal. Small signal means it is for a normal voltages. It cannot provide very high watt. 
and this is the two things are powered BJT. So you can see the first thing we see. See, we maximum we see your small signal BJT can handle is 40 volt, but the power BJT is you see it can handle 60, and this can handle 250. So you know when the I told you two reasons when the power is going to be high, the voltage should be high or current should be high. So here you see in power BJT, the in the first two N three zero five five model, the voltage is going to be very very high. It is sixty, and in the two N six zero seven eight, it is going to be two fifty. And collector current you see in amperes maximum. Collector current your small signal BJT can handle it 0.8 amperes. Worst case. But here you see it is 15 amperes and it is 7 amperes. It is almost 15 times and 7 times. This increase in current also produces the required amount of high power. Maximum power dissipation is 1.2 watts at room temperature in a small signal BJT. But here you see it is 115 watt and it is 45 watts. This enormous amount of power is required for some applications. And at 1.2 watts, this small signal BJT is on the verge of if you, if the power goes beyond 1.2, the transistor will break down. But this power BJT, it can handle till 115 watts. And this can handle till 45 watts. And see the current gain beta, 35 to 100. And the current gain here is 5 to 20, and it is 12 to 70. So naturally, we can see that the current gain is not very, very predominant as you increase the power, as you increase the power uh, dissipated from your transistor. Low zero conventional small signal BJTs only provide a, a high value of beta. Power BJTs don't provide a very high value of beta. And FT, this is the cutoff frequency. So your small signal uh, BJTs can operate till 300 megahertz, but your power BJTs cannot operate at high frequency. You can see the cutoff frequency is less than uh, 1 megahertz. It is 0.8 megahertz here. It is 1 megahertz here. So as you go to high frequency, the circuit becomes even more non-linear. So that is the reason why power BJTs cannot operate at a high frequency, but the conventional small signal BJTs can operate very well at the high frequencies. Okay, so this table will you can have a clear picture of all the parameters of small signal BJT and power BJT. So you can compare the values of VCE, IC, and power dissipation. Power dissipation is mostly VCE into IC, mostly VCE into IC, and uh, some considerations you will make for the minority carriers also. Okay, so that is what is uh, being tabulated here. And if you understand this table clearly, you can find that the power delivered is very, very high. The current gain for power BJT is very, very poor. And the high frequency operation is also very, very poor. The so conventional small signal BJTs can operate up to 300 megahertz easily, but your power BJTs will struggle to work beyond 0.8 and 1 megahertz. So that is the uh, comparative study of all the small signal BJT and power BJT, whatever we have uh, fabricated. Okay, the current gain is a strong function of why the current gain is reducing means you can see the current gain depends on temperature. So as the temperature is going to increase, the current gain will start reducing. So you know in power BJTs, the output power is very high, which is going to increase the temperature of your active region, right? So the temperature is going to increase, the current gain will drop. So the current gain, what we call as HFE, this HFE is going to drop when the temperature is going to increase. That is why all the power BJTs, they cannot provide current amplification. Only conventional small signal BJTs can provide uh, amplification. So at high current level, the current gain is going to drop. And also, you know, when you are going to operate at a very high frequency, all the parasitic capacitances and parasitic resistances as we have seen in the hybrid pi model will become active so if those hybrid uh, para parasitic capacitances and the thing uh, resistances are going to become ag uh, uh, are going to become active at high frequency then that is going to be a problem for you. That is going to reduce your output voltage and output current. So the reason for the current gain, which is dropping for high frequency in power BJTs is because this current gain is a strong function of temperature. So as the temperature of the region is going to increase, the current gain is going to drop. You can see the graph. 
கரண்ட் கரண்ட் வர்சஸ் கரண்ட் கெயின் ஸோ ஆஸ் த கலெக்டர் கரண்ட் இஸ் இன்க்ரீஸிங் த கரண்ட் கெயின் இஸ் மேக்சிமம் அண்ட் தென் இட் ஸ்டார்ட்ஸ் ரெடியூசிங் டிராஸ்டிகலி சி ஐ ஹவ் பிளாட்டட் திஸ் இன் அ செமி லா கிராஃப் ஓகே யூ கேன் சி த கிராஃப் இஸ் நான் லீனியர் you can uh, the range of values which you take in the graph is not actually it is uh, it is in logarithmic scale okay as the temperature is going to increase the current gain will increase but again as the collector current is going to increase the current gain will be reducing drastically so you know in power bjt's we will be operating only in this current values so you see the current gain is very very poor in the large cur- collector current values the conventional bjt's will operate in this value of uh, collector current so there you can see the current gain is very good but as the current collector current values becoming larger and larger the dc gain will be dropping off very fast so that at uh, high collector current values the value of hfe what we got the current gain will be drastically 